in chemistry, for the same molecule, it can be represented by many Lewis structures. Let's take a look at SO42- ion, sulfate ion. It has at least six Lewis structures. And if we look in detail, it has more than six. How amazing is that? As you can see in this picture, it has a mixture of many types of covalent bonds. However, out of all of these amazing structures, which one of it is the most stable structure of sulfate ion? Is there any way that we could determine it? Hello everyone, welcome back to Siri Bichara Kimia Wa. So back to my question just now, is there any way that we could determine the most stable structure? Yes, there is. The method that we are going to use is to determine the most stable, or in another fancy word, we used to call as most plausible structure, is by calculating the formal charge of the respective atom in the molecule. Formal charge is defined as a charge of an individual atoms would have if the bonding electrons were shed equally in the molecule. And there is a very simple formula that we can use to calculate the formal charge of an atom. The formula is formal charge is equal to number of valence electron of the atom minus number of electron surrounding the atom. And after we do the calculation of the formal charge on the atom of the molecule, the most stable or the most plausible Lewis structure that the molecule can have if the atom bear the smallest formal charge, the negative formal charge appears on most electronegative atom, the positive formal charge appears on the least electronegative atom. So, in this video, I will show you on how to use the formula that I mentioned just now and on top of that, I will guide you on how to determine the most plausible Lewis structure. So just a recall back just now, I also have informed you that we have a formal we have a formula that we can use, which is formal charge is equal to the number of valence electron of the atom minus the number of electron surrounding the atom. So for the number of valence electron of the atom you should know yourself at this level what is the valence electron for the basic elements that you guys have learned so far it is very similar like your SPM before the basic one like nitrogen oxygen fluorine and so on and the number of electrons surrounding the atom this is something new for you which is this when you are encounter any single bond that is attached to the to the atom, it will contribute one electron. When you encounter double bond, two electrons, and triple bond will contribute three electrons. So, it looks very vague now. So let's try the example. The first example: calculate the formal charge of both structure of CO two below. Next. Determine the most plausible Lewis structure for CO2. Now, let's focus on structure 1. So I enlarged it and become like this. And as you can see, in structure 1, we have carbon as the central atom. And we have two oxygen. One oxygen with triple bond. And one oxygen with one single bond. So, just like I told you just now, when you see single bond, it will contribute one electron. Double bond. 2 electrons and triple bond, 3 electrons. Since this molecule have triple bond and single bond, so we only look at these two, single bond and also triple bond. And do not forget to mention again the formula of the formal charge. Number of valence electron of the atom minus number of electron surrounding the atom. So let's look at oxygen here. As you guys know yourself, oxygen is group 16. So when it is group 16, it has 6 valence electron. Minus, we have to look at the electron surrounding the oxygen. As you can see, this oxygen has 2 electrons. 
and it has one triple bond. So, what we can do, it has two electrons that come next to it. Another one comes from the triple bond. So, two plus three is five. So, if you minus this, according to the formula, six minus five, it will become positive one. A common mistake that students will do is they forgot to put positive. Remember again, this is a formal charge. When we talk about charge, you must have a positive charge or negative charge. Zero means neutral, so you don't have to put any charge in front of it. All right. Okay, now we go for carbon. Carbon is in group 14, so it has four valence electron. And now we look at the electron surrounding the carbon. Minus. So you can see we have one triple bond contributing three electron and it has one single bond contributing one electron. So if you can see, if you minus this, four minus four, the value is zero. Since carbon is neutral, so you don't have to put any charge in front. Next, we look at this oxygen. This oxygen again is come from group 16, so it has six valence electron minus the electron surrounding it. As you can see, it already has six electron, which is come from the three lone pairs. Six plus with the single bond it has here. So one. So six minus seven is equal to negative one. So there you go. This is the way how we calculate the formal charge. This is for structure one. So now we go for structure two. And see that it's a bit different where you have carbon and two oxygens. However, there are two oxygen with two double bonds now. So let's calculate again one by one. If we go to this oxygen, oxygen comes from group 16. So it has six valence electron minus electrons from the oxygen. It already has four electrons that comes from the lone pair and it has one double bond here. So it's contributing two electrons. So six minus six, the value becomes zero. And next we go for carbon. Similarly, carbon comes from group 14, so it has four valence electron minus. Now, you can see that carbon are surrounded with two double bonds. So two electrons each from each of the double bonds. So four minus four, this is equal to zero. And for this oxygen, you don't have to calculate again. As you can see, this oxygen is exactly similar like this. So the six minus six, the value is also zero. So now we have two structures that we have calculated. Structure one, we form a charge positive one, zero, negative one and structure two with all zero value for the formal charge so that's the first question has been answered second question which one of these are the most plausible structure if you guys remember before that i told you there are three ways that we can determine the most plausible structure which is the first one all the atoms bears the lowest formal charge in other words they has all zero value the second one, the more electronegative atom bears a negative formal charge. So as you can see, like this oxygen on structure one, it has negative one charge. And the last one, the more electro positive atom will have a positive formal charge. As you can see, none of it have it here. So we can conclude that structure two here, all the three atom has a lowest formal charge, which is zero, zero, and zero. For structure one, unfortunately, oxygen that has a triple bond is a positive one. If you recall back last time, electronegativity of oxygen is very high. In other words, it prefers to have a negative value. So that is why structure one is not stable. Thus, we can conclude that structure two is the most plausible structure as all atoms has the lowest formal charge. Lowest here representing the zero value. All right. So I'm going to give you a second example to enhance this understanding. All right. So now let's go for a second example. So if you look at here, a very similar question, but now we have POCl3 as example. And as you can see, POCl3 also has two structures one with all single bonds and one with one double bond towards the oxygen 
let's calculate all the formal charge for structure 1 and structure 2. For structure 1, okay, that's right, we go for oxygen. Oxygen comes from group 16, so it has 6 minus electron, minus the electrons surrounding the oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and don't forget, it has one single bond, so 6 plus 1, it becomes 7. So 6 minus 7, it becomes negative 1. And as you can see, for all these three chlorines, they are all identical, because it has a single bond with three bond pairs. So, Chlorine comes from group 17, so it has 7 minus electron, and the electron around the, surrounding chlorine, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, that comes from this three lone pair, plus 1, that comes from the single bond, so the total is 7. So 7 minus 7 is 0. So this one also, 7 minus 7, 0. This one also, 7 minus 7, 0. And don't forget about the central atom, phosphorus. Phosphorus comes from group 15, so it has 5 valence electron, minus, as you can see, around this phosphorus, there are no electron, but it has 4 single bonds. So 1 electron each from them, so 4. 5 minus 4 is equal to positive 1. So these are the formal charges of all the atoms in structure 1. So let's move on for structure 2. Now it's a bit different whereby the oxygen now has a double bond. So let's calculate. Again, oxygen comes from group 16, so it has 6 valence electron minus you have 4 electrons that come from 2 long pairs plus with 1 double bond. Double bond will contribute 2 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 electrons. So 6 minus 6, the value is 0. And now, you can see for these two chlorine, they are identical because it has single bond and three lone pairs. So, chlorine comes from group 17, so it has seven valence electron. And the electron surrounding chlorine is one, two, three, four, five, six. Plus with the single bond, so we have seven. So, seven minus zero, seven minus seven is equal to zero. Similarly with this chlorine, seven minus seven is equal to zero. Similarly with this chlorine as well, seven minus seven is equal to zero. Now, for this phosphorus, again, comes from group 15, so we have five valence electron. Minus, now, you can see that this phosphorus are surrounded with three single bond and one double bond. So, one single bond will contribute one electron each, one, two, three, and double bond contribute two electrons. So, five in total. So, five minus five is equal to zero. So, as you can see, these are all the formal charges for structure two. If we compare the value of formal charges between structure one and structure two, as you can see, oxygen on structure one has a negative one formal charge, which is very stable. However, Phosphorus, if you recall back in your chapter 3 last time, phosphorus is an electronegative element. Thus, it preferred to have a negative formal charge. If you look at structure 1, it has a positive one formal charge. That is why this structure is not stable. Thus, that is why you can see structure 2, all the atoms has a lower formal charge which is 0. Because of this reason, we also can conclude that structure 2 is the most possible structure because it has the lowest formal charge. Well, there you go. I have shown you on how to calculate the formal charge of an atom in the molecule. And also, I have shown you two ways on how to determine the most plausible structure in this structure. So guys, after looking at this video, please give it a try and do more exercise on this, alright? So, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and please click the bell icon below, right? So, whenever the new videos come out, you guys will get the notification. Alright, so that's all for me today. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you again.